fifth lesson is the first unit, lesson four in advanced free algebra, rational and irrational numbers. The homework that goes with it is page eight and nine in the homework packet. And we're having a unit test on Wednesday. Now this is for this year, 2016-2017. Uh, but if you are looking at this next year, that will be this. We'll have to check in class. And we don't have class on Friday because it's a new day. All right, we're going to do this warm up. Tell whether you get a positive or a negative result. The product of five negative numbers. Well, the first thing you need to think of is product is multiplied. So if I multiply five negatives together, that's an odd number of negatives. I'm going to get a negative. Now, if you can't figure that out off the top of your head, do a problem. Negative one, two, three, four, five. So, take a look at this. Negative one times a negative one is one. Negative one times negative one is one. Times, bring down this negative one. The answer is going to be negative one. Whenever you have an odd number of negatives and you're multiplying, or dividing for that matter, you're going to end up with a negative. The sum of four negatives. Now think about this. Sum, sum means add. So if you add four negatives, negative one plus negative one plus negative one plus negative one, aren't I going to get negative four? It's going to be a negative number because when you add numbers, add them and they have the same size, you add and keep the size. The quotient of a negative and a positive, that means you're going to divide. So if I do a negative, divided by a positive, I'm going to end up with a negative. The product of eight negatives. So multiply eight negatives. That's an even number of negatives. I'm going to end up with a positive effect. All right. Today we're going to talk about rational and irrational numbers and estimating square roots. Everything you know right now, they are called real numbers. Real numbers are broken into rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. Numbers that can be written as fractions. That's where the word ratio comes from. It's a ratio. It's rational. Or right, integers. So negative four, one, zero, eight. They can all be written as fractions. So just think about it. Let's put one under all of these. All integers are rational. In rational numbers, we also have fractions. Negative two thirds, seven and one fourth. Those are rational because obviously they can be written as fractions. Now, two types of decimals are rational. Terminated, so like 0.5, which we know is one half. That can be written as a decimal or as a fraction. And repeated. 0.3 is the bar over it, that's one third. Terminating and repeating decimals are both rational because they can be written as fractions. Now, irrational numbers, decimals, that go on forever and ever, forever and ever, and don't repeat. Now, the most famous irrational number in the world is Pi. We estimate pi to be 3.14, but pi goes on forever and ever and does not repeat. The other irrational numbers are square roots of non-perfect squares. Now, I should go back over here, and as far as um, rational numbers go, I can add square roots of perfect squares. Because the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. Those are rational. But over here, it's irrational. In any square root of a non-perfect square, I can also write a decimal like this. 2, 3, 4, That is an irrational number. Look, these dots here show that it goes on forever and ever, and there is no pattern. So, irrational. Numbers that go on forever and ever, but do not repeat. Pi, square roots of non-perfect squares, and any non-repeating decimal. Alright, identify these as rational or irrational. Well, take a look at this first one. It goes on forever and ever, and there is not a pattern. Because here's 0 .87, 0 .877. So this is irrational. This is a terminating decimal. It is rational. Any terminating decimal. Fractions. 
It is rational. Square root of 51 is not a perfect square, so it is irrational. 0.45 repeating, that is rational, because it repeats. Here's a terminating decimal, that is rational. This, 162%, if I change that to a decimal, isn't that 1.62? So it's a terminating decimal, it is rational. Let's look at this one. 0.59, 599, 599, stuff like that. Because on here, remember, there is no repeating, so it is here rational. All right. Take a look at these squares. This square is 5 by 5, so the area is 25. This is 7 by 7, so the area is 49, because you do like times with. This square is 9 by 9, so the area is 81. Those areas are called perfect squares. These are squaring. The reason we call it a perfect square because it represents a perfect square. So, uh, we can use two as an exponent on a number to show that we are squaring the number. So, this is 5 squared, 7 squared, 9 squared. Alright. What would the length of this guy be? Well, what times itself gives you 16? It would be 4. What times itself gives you 9? It would be 3. That's called taking the square root. Alright, you can use this idea to help us estimate square roots that don't work out perfectly. We are going to have to think about some perfect squares. To help you do that, they are listed on the side of this page. When you look in your note jacket, the squares are listed down the side. Now, I'm going to write stuff here. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 2, or 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 26, or what am I doing? 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64. Now, if I want to estimate the square root of 45, 45 falls in between 36 and 39. So, it falls between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, right? Since the square root of 36 is 6 and the square root of 49 is 9, we know that 45, the square root of 45 is going to be between, this is a it's going to be between 6 and 7. Now, let's be a little bit more practical. Isn't it closer? The square root of 45 is closer to the square root of 49. I would say a good estimate would be like 6.8. That's an estimate because we know that it's closer to 49 than it is to 36. Let's do another one. The square root of 68 falls between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Those are perfect squares. This is 8 squared and this is 9 squared. Since the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 81 is 9, we know the square root of 68 is going to be between 8 and 9. And the good estimate would be, isn't the square root of 68 just a little bit more than the square root of 64? I'd say like 8.2. Now, would I mark 8.1 wrong? No. Would I mark 8.3 wrong? No. Would I mark 8.5 wrong? Yes, because 68 is not halfway between 64 and 68. All right. Using your knowledge of square roots, order these numbers from greatest to least. All right. So, let's change these all to decimals. 8 goes into 15 one time, the remainder 17. So that's almost 2. The square root of 16 is 4. 27, 7 goes in there 2 times, and my remainder is going to be 6, 7. And I've got 3.6. And then the square root of 5. So while we know the square root of 4 is 2, but wouldn't it be a little bit more so like an estimate of maybe 2.1? Alright, so let's go from greatest to least. Which number here is obviously greatest? The square root of 16. I'm going to cross that out. Then I've got a 3.6. Then I've got 2 and 6 sevenths, which is 27. Then I've got 
2.1, which is a quarter of a semi, and then I've got one in 78, which is 50. 